The master ka is a special type of monica stent that can be inserted by a pushed rather than a pulled technique. It is comprised of a silicon sleeve and fixation head identical to those of standard monicas, but with a removable insertion guide placed inside the lumen of the silicon. The design of the master ka follows the same insertion concept used for venous catheterization. The stents for the master ka push type of nasolacrimal intubation come in three lengths, 30, 35, and 40 millimeters. The master ka provides an excellent alternative for managing both early as well as late and very late nasolacrimal drainage obstructions in children. However, an initial diagnostic probing on the operating table is an essential step prior to inserting any stent. Probing equipment should include the green FCI disposable punctum dilator with an insertion pin on the opposite end, a graduated measuring device with marks at 30, 35, and 40 millimeters, and a wider lacrimal probe. A brief summary of the main principles of diagnostic lacrimal probing may be helpful. A lacrimal probe is guided carefully through one canaliculus horizontally until it hits a bony stop at the nasolacrimal groove. The probe is then passed vertically down the nasolacrimal duct and a tactile sensation can be noted as the probe passes through any distal obstruction at the valve of Hasner, where it is most often described as a slight popping sensation. After a few more millimeters, the probe will stop when it touches the floor of the nasal antrum. A second wider probe is then passed through the nostril under the inferior turbinate until it makes metal-to-metal -metal contact with the first probe. This second step must be done with great care to avoid harming the nasal mucosa and causing bleeding. The diagnostic probing will reveal the location and severity of the nasolacrimal stenosis so that an appropriate treatment can be determined based on this information rather than any preconceived ideas. The diagnostic probing on the operating table must answer three questions. First, what is the type of nasolacrimal stenosis or obstruction? Tactile sensations will differ depending on the location and severity of the nasolacrimal problem. Simple mucosal stenosis is by far the most frequent kind and the probe will usually pass easily through an obstruction at the valve of Hasner. Complex stenoses, however, are more difficult to pass through and a false passage can too easily be created. Second, is there confirmation that the probe or measuring device has passed through the valve of Hasner and has not created a bony or submucosal false passage? To answer this question without carrying out nasal endoscopy, it is essential to confirm the proper location of the probe with metal-to-metal -metal contact. Positive metallic contact confirms that the measuring probe is in the inferior nasal meatus. The second wider probe should be able to pass freely on both sides of the first probe and be able to cause visible movement of that probe. If there is no metal-to-metal -metal contact, it may be that there is a false passage. In this instance, the probe should be withdrawn and a second attempt can be carefully tried using the opposite punctum and canaliculus. If this is not successful, then a more significant intervention will have to be considered, usually at a later date. Third, how do we select the correct length of the master ka? The master ka must be long enough to pass clearly through any nasolacrimal stenosis. Essentially, we just need to know the distance between the lacrimal punctum and the floor of the nasal antrum. The master ka must be longer than, or at least equal to, this distance, so that the end emerges from the valve of Hasner. It must never be shorter. The entire surgical zone can be cleaned with a diluted betadine or a chlorhexidine solution. The appropriate sized master ka is then removed from its sterile package. It should be determined that there is easy movement of the metal insertion guide within the lumen of the silicon sleeve. The superior lacrimal punctum is preferred and should be gently dilated. The master ka should follow the same pathway as the measuring device or probe used for the diagnostic probing. It should be possible to pass through most mucosal nasolacrimal stenoses in the nasolacrimal duct and the valve of Hasner, and then, just a few millimeters further, reach the floor of the nasal antrum. The insertion guide must be removed very carefully.
The fixation head should be kept in contact with the punctum by pressing the fixation head against the punctum by using one end of the FCI dilating insertion instrument. Use of forceps should be avoided to prevent harming the delicate silicon sleeve. Rotating movements of the guide back and forth, like winding a watch, should be done very slowly with upward traction, millimeter by millimeter, while the guide and silicon sheath remain in the vertical axis of the nasolacrimal sac and duct. The rotating movements should be continued until the insertion guide has been completely removed. It is then essential to check two things. First, that the fixation head remains in close contact with the punctum without having a tendency to pop out, and second, that it does not pass through the punctum and become buried in the canaliculus. This is especially important since the silicon stent is then no longer visible and can be difficult to retrieve. If the length of the master ca is longer than the distance between the punctum and the nasal floor, the lower end of the sleeve will hit the floor and the fixation head will remain some distance away from the punctum. Nevertheless, if the fixation head is less than 5 millimeters above the punctum, it is not necessary to immediately remove this stent. With the metal guide still in the lumen of the sleeve, proper location of the end of the master ca can be confirmed with metal-to-metal -metal contact. By holding the fixation plug firmly against the punctum and carefully withdrawing the metal guide one to two millimeters, the silicon sleeve can be guided further into the canaliculus by a similar amount. This process can be repeated several times until the fixation head reaches the punctum. However, if there is any risk for premature expulsion because the stent still appears too long, then this master cost stent should be removed and the procedure repeated with a shorter one. Securing the master ca. The fixation head can be engaged within the punctum by using the FCI dilating insertion pin instrument. This procedure is the same as for inserting a standard lacrimal plug. Care must be taken to ensure that the collar is placed uniformly against the palpebral margin. A topical antibiotic ointment is prescribed to be used three times daily for one week. With the master ca push technique, the patient will wake up much more quickly and postoperative monitoring will be shorter than after a pulled intubation, which improves the overall surgical experience. Removal of the master ca can be done as early as one month postoperatively. This is done as a simple office procedure using forceps to grasp the fixation head. Points to consider. First, nasolacrimal stenosis should never be underestimated. If the silicon sleeve of the master ca will not push through a complex stenosis, a standard pulled Monica intubation may provide an alternative solution. Second, if there is no contact with metal, it may be that the master ca is too short or a false passage has occurred, which would make it impossible to continue successfully. The master ca must in these cases be removed and the procedure started again from the beginning. If contact with metal is still not obtained, a classical pulled intubation technique can be attempted. Third, if after completely removing the insertion guide, the silicon sleeve can still be seen between the fixation head and the punctum, the master ca may have been incorrectly placed. It should under no circumstances be forced inside the canaliculus. This would squash the silicon like a spring, such that it may be expelled prematurely therefore leading to a failed procedure. The master ca should then be removed from the tear duct and the insertion guide put back in place in the lumen. After that, the entire nasolacrimal procedure should be repeated. Fourth, once the insertion guide has been fully withdrawn, the fixation head should not show any signs of becoming buried. If there is a tendency for the master ca to become buried, it should be removed. If the punctum remains too dilated to secure the fixation head, then the master ca should be removed and inserted in the opposite canaliculus where it may more securely hold in place. Keys to success. The importance of carrying out a diagnostic lacrimal probing on the operating table should be emphasized. It is this step that defines technique selection for treating nasolacrimal imperforations in infants. There are three keys to success. 1. Differentiating between simple and complex nasolacrimal obstructions. 2. Good metal-to-metal -metal contact. 3. 
sufficient master car length to extend from the punctum and through the valve of Hasner. Summary The master car is an excellent alternative for treating routine as well as stubborn nasolacrimal mucosal stenosis or obstruction. From a technical point of view, inserting a master car is hardly any more complicated than inserting a nasolacrimal probe. The method of nasolacrimal intubation by pushing is much simpler than the standard pulling technique because there is no need to recover the insertion guide via the nasal cavity. This also minimizes the risk of intra- and postoperative bleeding. As a result, inhalational anesthesia with a mask can be done more safely. Assisted mechanical ventilation and laryngeal protection are optional. Monitoring in the recovery room is also much shorter. In treating stubborn mucosal nasolacrimal stenoses, the percentage of good results with the Mastercar push type of intubation is about 90%, which is comparable to the results obtained with the pull type of Monica intubation.